In this video, we're going to do some more refactoring of the existing code. One of the principles of object-oriented programming is encapsulation. That means that one object cannot directly modify the properties of another object. Instead, the first object has to call a function on the second object, and then that function will modify the property but we can also put some more logic in there to do things to make sure that we didn't get a bad value or that we're not going beyond some certain limit. For example, in this program, if we want to heal the player, we want to make sure that the player never heals above their maximum hit points. If one object can modify the hit points property directly, then it could set it to a higher value than the maximum hit points. So instead we're going to create a new heal function that will make sure that the player never gets healed above their maximum hit points. We're also going to do the same encapsulation technique for the gold property. When a, a living entity receives gold or spends gold, we especially want to make sure that the player cannot spend more gold than they have. So we're going to have that logic encapsulated in our function. We'll start by opening the solution and modifying the living entity class. The first thing we're going to do is change the setters to private setters. So for the name, we used to have just a set. Now we're going to make that private set on line 20. We'll do the same thing with the current hit points on line 30, make that a private set. The maximum hit points on line 40, a private set. And for the gold property on line 50, we'll make that a private set. So now we can only set those properties values inside the living entity class. As soon as you do this, there's going to be a lot of errors in your solution because we have a lot of other places where we try to modify these properties, but we'll go and fix those in the rest of this video. The next thing we're going to do is add a new property here on line 64. It's a Boolean is dead, and this is an expression body property. So it's going to calculate this current hit points less than or equal to zero, which is going to be true or false. And it's going to return that whenever we look at the is dead property. We don't really need to have this property. I just think it's going to be a little bit nicer to have a single property we can look at rather than doing this current hit points less than or equal to zero in several different places. On line 68, we have a new event here. It's a public event of on killed. We're going to let other objects subscribe to this on killed event. So it will know when the player or monster is killed and it can do whatever it needs to do. Next, because the name maximum hit points, current hit points and gold properties can only be set within the living entity class now because of the private setters, we need to somehow get those values in and we're going to do that by adding these parameters to the constructor on line 70. And then on line 72 through 75, we'll set the properties to the values that were passed into the constructor. Next on lines 81 through 120, we have some new functions. These are the functions that are going to encapsulate changing the properties values. So on line 81, we have take damage where you pass in the amount of damage to do. We're going to subtract the hit points of damage from the player's current hit points on line 83. And then 85 through 89, we're going to check to see if the living entity is dead. If it is, and this is that new Boolean property we created that says current hit points less than or equal to zero. So if the living entity is dead, we're going to set their current hit points to zero just in case this was a negative number because they took more damage than they had hit points. And then we're going to call this raise on killed event function. This is a new one we'll look at in a minute, but this is the one that's going to raise the notification that the living entity was killed. On lines 92 through 100, we have a heal function that takes in a number of hit points to heal. It adds that to the current hit points. If the current hit points are greater than the maximum allowed hit points, then we're going to reset the current hit points to the maximum hit points. On line 102 through 105, we have this nice function completely heal, which sets the current hit points to maximum hit points. We could do this through the heal function, but I think this is a little bit more clear as to what's happening here. 
So when the player gets killed in the game, we're going to send them back to their home and completely heal them. So I think completely heal is clearer than trying to calculate how many hit points we need to heal and passing that into the heal function. On 107 through 110, we have a function to receive gold that just adds the amount of gold to the living entity's gold. And on 112 through 120, we have a spend gold function that's going to check to see if we're trying to spend more gold than the living entity has. And if so, it's going to raise this exception. It's going to say, hey, you tried to spend too much gold. Otherwise, we'll subtract the gold from the living entity's gold. And then finally, on 167 through 170, we have the raise on killed event. This is going to look at the on killed event, see if there's any subscribers to it. If so, it's going to raise the event. So that way, any subscribers, which in this case is going to be the game session object, will know if a player gets killed or if a monster gets killed. They're going to be subscribed to the player on killed event and to the monster on killed event. They'll receive this notification and they'll be able to do whatever they need to do. In the player's case, we'll send them home and heal them. In the monster's case, we'll give the player all the rewards from killing the monster. Next, because we changed the constructor for living entity, we're going to need to go into the child classes and modify them so that they can pass in the values. So in player, we now have the player constructor. When it calls the base living entity constructor, it's going to pass in the player's name, their maximum hit points, their current hit points, and their gold. For the monster constructor, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pass in the name, maximum hit points, current hit points, and gold. And for the trader, we're going to pass in the name, and we're going to pass in 9,999 for the other values. Right now, we don't let the players fight the traders, so we really don't need a maximum hit points and a current hit points. And we want to give them a lot of gold. Not that we subtract the gold from the trader, but that's something we may do in the future. So for now, we're just going to hard code those values and pass in really large numbers. Next, we're going to modify the game session class. So it uses the encapsulation functions and it no longer directly tries to modify the properties. And it's also going to listen to the on killed event. The first thing we need to do is go down to line 121 in the game session constructor. And we need to change the current player instantiation to use the new player constructor. Before we were setting the properties individually. Now we need to pass in the values in the constructor. Next, we'll modify a game session to watch for the on killed event on the current player and the current monster. So in the setter for current player on lines 27 through 30, if the current player backing variable is not null, so if we already have a current player object in there, we want to unsubscribe to the event handler. That's what this minus equal is. When you say an object and then an event minus equal, that says unsubscribe from it. And on current player killed here is the function that's going to get run when the player is killed. So now we're going to say whatever the old current player was, unsubscribe, we don't want to run this function when the player is killed. Then we'll set the backing variable to the passed in value, the new current player. And then we're going to say if the current player is not null, because it is possible to pass in a null to the setter, we're going to say now on this new current player, they're on killed. We want to subscribe to it and we want to run this on player killed function. So now we're using the plus equal. This is a common pattern that you use when you have one object subscribing to an event on another object and that object can change because otherwise .NET's garbage collection doesn't know the object is completely unused. We don't care about the old current player anymore. If we still have the subscription active, it might think that the rest of the program cares about it, so it needs to keep it around in memory. For this small game, we don't need to worry too much about memory, but it's a good habit to get into. Then we'll also go down to the current monster property and do the same type of thing. When we set the current monster to a new value, if the old current monster was not null, 
we're going to unsubscribe from its on-killed event because we no longer care about that monster, whether it's killed or not. Then we're going to set the backing variable to the new passed in value. And if the new current monster is not null, we're going to subscribe to its on killed event. And the function we want to run when the monster is killed, if we receive that event notification, is our new function that we're going to create on current monster killed. Now the game session has subscribed to the on killed event for current player and current monster. We need to make some modifications to the attack current monster function down on line 245. We had a lot of code in here before that would check to see after an attack if the monster was killed and if so give the player the loot and if the player was killed move them to their home and heal them now that we've got the subscription and the new functions on current monster killed and on current player killed those are going to handle all of that logic so inside attack current monster all we need to do is determine the amount of damage to do. If the damage is zero, we'll raise our message that you missed the attack. Otherwise, we're going to raise the message that you hit the monster for however much damage. And we're going to call the current monsters take damage function, part of our encapsulation, and pass in the amount of damage that you did to the monster. Then we'll check to see if the current monster is dead. If so, we'll get a new monster. Otherwise, we're going to let the monster attack the player. We get the monster's damage. And if the damage is zero, we say that the monster attacks but misses. Otherwise, we raise a message that the monster hits you for so much damage. And then the current player object, we're going to call the take damage function and pass in the amount of damage. One thing to notice here, before we were subtracting the damage on the line before the raise message. So it would be more like this order where we apply the damage to the hit points and then we raise the message. There's a problem with this because we now have the event handler. What could happen is the current player could take damage. The damage could kill them, which would raise the event that the player was killed. And then our new function for on current player killed is going to move the player to their home and completely heal them. But when it moves the player to their home, it's going to also say we're at a new location. So we need to get a new monster for the location. There is no monster at the home location. So current monster is going to be set to null. And then on line 283, when we raise the message, there is no current monster anymore. The player has been moved home and the current monster has been set to null. So there would be an error. That's why I had to change it so that we raise the message first and then we do the action that could possibly raise an event. That's one thing you need to be careful of when you're working with events. They can potentially cause other things to change and your next bit of code may kind of be expecting things not to change yet. So we had to change the messages first. Then on lines 288 through 295, we have our on current player function. We have our on current player killed function. So this is what's going to happen when the current player's hit points go below zero and the events raised. We're going to display a blank line and raise the message that the monster killed you. Then we're going to move the player to their home location, set their current location and then we're going to completely heal the player. Notice that our message about the current monster dot name killed you is before we reset the current location because we don't want to change location and we don't want to change current monster yet. Then on lines 297 through 313, we have the on current monster killed. And this is all the code that we used to have up in the attack monster where the player would defeat the monster and get the loot. Now we've just moved this out to this event handler function and it's the same code. We display some messages, we give the player some experience points, some gold, and then give them the items. So in summary, for the game session class, what we've done is subscribe to the on killed event for the current player and current monster. We've taken out any of the killed code from the attack current monster function for both the player and the monster 
and we've moved it to separate functions that will run when the on killed event is raised for the player or the monster. And then the final small change we need to make is to tradescreen.xaml.cs. This is where the player could buy or sell items. And now we need to use the receive gold function and the spend gold function for the current player because we no longer have direct access to the current player setter. It's a private setter now, so we have to go through these functions. Now we need to run the game and make sure it still works the way it used to. So we'll go north, fight some snakes. Okay, our gold got updated. Our hit points have been updating. The player got killed by the snake and we've moved them to their home successfully and their hit points are now back to 10, so they've been completely healed. If we go into a trade screen, the player has a million and two gold right now. Let's have them buy a pointy stick. We see the gold updated to a million and one. And if they sell the pointy stick, we see that it updated to a million and two again. So it looks like it's all working. If you're watching the video on YouTube, I'll have a link in the description to the support page on my site with all the source code. And if you have any questions, you can leave a comment there. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Thanks.